Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm a four-star developer, deal with front-end as well as the back-end. And this channel is all about how to uh, become a four-star developer without any computer science background. So if you, if this is your first time watching my video, please subscribe to my channel and thumbs up to my content if you like my video. Also, I will continue to upload all related videos about how to become a full stack developer. So in this series, I'm going to talk about the third language, so which is a prerequisite for mobile development using Flutter. And I will go over everything you need to know about the third language. So here, it's a quick agenda for today's video. So first we'll give you a brief introduction about what star and how we're going to use it. And second is we will guide you through the installation process. And the final, uh, I will just give you a quick through about your first program, uh, which is the Hello World. And Back to the DAR official side. So what is DAR? And DAR is a programming language which developed by Google and released in 2013. It aims to help developer build the multiple platform application with Flutter. And DAR is an object-oriented language like Java and C++. So if you are familiar with one of those languages, uh, I think you could learn it very, very quickly through these tutorials. And the official website of the DAR is, uh, is a very good place for you to reference. And also all the links to websites and codes will be put in the description below. So you don't need to take any notes. I will write down anything for you. Okay, so you will see open the DAR official DAR website. You will see there is a get star icon. And maybe it's a label, yeah, on the right top corner. So when you click it, you'll be direct to the DAR SDK download page. And DAR provide a different SDKs for different platforms. You can see here is uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So based on my laptop, I will show you how to install DAR SDK on Mac OS. So as you can see, the installation pro process is quite straightforward. You just copy those two, two commands and paste into, into your console, your terminal, yeah, into your terminal. So however, you will like uh, encounter an uh, error says root command not found. So when you encounter this error, just see, just go to the homebrew website uh, and copy the command they show into their they show in their website. Just copy this script and open your terminal and just paste it and hit enter. So this command will install the homebrew in your laptop. So what is homebrew? Homebrew is just a package manager for your for Mac OS. You can use for Linux as well. It's very convenient to download some packages from the internet. And after you successful install the homebrew, then go back to DAR's official site and copy those two commands and paste in your terminal and hit enter. So just wait a few minutes, the DAR SDK will be installed. Uh, since I already installed DAR SDK, so I will get the warning say I already installed it. So if you if it, if this is your first time install it, you, you won't get the same message assigned. So how to check if you successful install or not? So here is a command called that and 
dash dash version. So you hit enter, you'll see your current dot version number. So if you see the message is similar like me, and yeah, it indicates you already installed it successful. Congratulations. So back to my map and the next step I will going to uh, show you how to install the code editor so which you can write the dark code and here I would like to uh, recommend the Visual Studio code so which is uh, developed by Microsoft so the reason I like to use Visual Studio code uh, because you can install the external plugin that provides like different features as you want. Yeah, the, the installation is also pretty straightforward. Uh, you can choose a different platform you are and just hit the download button. So you will download a zip file and you just unzip it when you finish. So after you finish the download and you open the Visual Studio Code, I will show you how to install those uh, plugins. Yeah, here I have uh, two highly recommend uh, plugins for you to install. So if uh, you want to write the dark code, for the first one is called dark and the second one is called code runner. So back to Visual Studio Code, you will find a uh, there is icon called extensions on the left panel bar so when you click it you you can search the plugin plugin in the marketplace so i just search the dark and you see the first one show uh have a three million download and ins uh, and installed it so number of uh, install and download so i i, I just just install this one and the second plugin uh, is called Code Runner. Code Runner. Also install this one. So for the Dara plugin, it provides a feature you you could highlight the syntax. Um, and also the Code Runner is for your quickly run code. You just need to right click the file and hit Run Code, and your code will be run. It's really convenient plugin. So after you finish, install those two plugins. So we will going to write down our first dark program. So you just open the folder. Yeah, currently we don't have any like a folder in our workspace. We just we we just need to create a new folder. So we open new folder. So go to the workspace you want to store your project and just hit the new new folder and here I just name my folder as start tutorial and I create and just open it with few may we with few seconds yeah you will see your workspace create successful and here I'm going to Type the our first start program. You can create a new file by right click, and also you can just hit this icon. This the first one is create a new file, and the second one is create a new folder. So, uh, because this just the first uh, program, just a demo. So we just create a simple file and called hello world and we go back to the dar official site and copy the first program which is hello world and you need to save it after you finish the code you need to save it so if you in mac os you can hit uh, command s if you in windows you hit uh, control s so after you finish you right click, you will see this run code. Yeah, you will see the console says hello world. Yeah, congratulations. Okay, so I will go through this hello world program. So 
And as you see, the, the, the main point, the main function, the main function is the entry point for every program. So if you didn't write down the main function, uh, your program maybe fail. And also you see after the code we write actually is between those curly brackets. And we can type any code uh, into this uh, curly bracket. But uh, I will talk uh, more detail about what's the function and how to declare the variable and how to uh, specify the data type and classes and control flow in the future video. So we just keep it simple for now. And this this line of code just print the hello world into the console. And the print also is a function uh, which is built in dark. And if you need to print something, you just need, you just simply uh, call the print function and pass the argument, pass the parameter into it. Yeah, parameter. So the per parameter I'm parsing is a string, so which is hello world. But don't don't worry if you didn't know string. I will talk about those in later video. So this is just uh, the first program. I just want to show you we successful install our like a coding environment. Yeah. And also if, if you just want to like uh, familiar with uh, World Voice Star and just want to practice uh, the Star feature and you and don't want to install uh, this uh, SDK uh, that already uh, provide this uh, website called Darpad. So you can open the Darpad, you, they including the SDK. So you can type anything in this uh, left panel as well, and you just hit run, the code will, will show in the right panel. Yeah. But I personally, I, I prefer uh, using V8 Visual Studio Code because we will have something like a uh, suggestion, uh, um, like syntax highlight, but uh, we can add more plugin as uh, as if we want something like a uh, more in our futures. Okay, so back to the my man, and that's all for today's video. And I hope all enjoy the content I'm showing and so I will keep uh, uploading the future video about the different topic of, of the dark language so I will see you in next video hello everyone uh, welcome back to my channel so in this series I'm going to talk about the dark language so, which is a prerequisite for a mobile development using Flutter. And in previous lesson, we already learned the how to install and how to set up, install the uh, Dart SDK and uh, set up our uh, development environment. So, in this series, I'm going to talk uh, um, the variable and data type in Dart. So, if if this is your first time watching my video, so please subscribe to my channel if uh, you like my video, and I will also continue up the the content about how to become a four star developer. Okay, let's get start. And here is the mind map for Dart. Uh, for today's agenda and I will going to talk about how to make a comment and how to declare a variable and what's the data type and what's the type inference and a fine or what's the uh, constant and final keyword in that also I will give you a, a comparison about what's the runtime and what's the compile time okay let's get start So you see, uh, I already uh, 
uh, write down everything for today's tutorial, uh, but I will like uh, execute, uh, execute those code line by line. And I, I do this just for saving time, so I don't want to waste your time just uh, watching uh, me typing those uh, those code. Yeah, so I just uh, <coughs> prepare those ahead. And oh, okay, okay. So how to make a how to make a comment in in Dart? So as you see, so. In that, if you want to make a comment, so you just uh, insert to a splash to slash. So this line of code will ignore by the program when it executes. You can also uh, use three uh, slash. Uh, three slash just used for like a function um, comment and also for document comment. Yeah, just if you just using, uh, just want to uh write down some comment for, uh, tell some uh, someone else to well, what the code doing. You you can just use the two dash. So how to declare a variable? You you can see there is a formula. You can declare a variable in Dart. So first you need to give a type, and then you need to give identifier. And then you need to give the initial value. So before uh, I run those code, uh, I will first just give you a brief introduction about what's a variable. So variable just uh, just used for storing information, uh, which can be used later by your program. So suppose uh, imagine you have a you have a different empty boxes and you have a uh, like you have apple you have different you have different kind of fruit like a uh, apple a uh, strawberry and you want to store uh, each fruit into a uh, different kind of boxes so how you can find uh, which fruit is uh, inside which boxes so you need to label it right so you need to label it so you can find it in the later so this is the same when you write the program code. So you you need to give the you need to give the variable give a uh, you need to when you declare a variable you actually like allocate a memory location in your computer. So how you can find those. Uh, memory location in the later program if you want to uh, use those uh, variable again so you just give it the identifier and so let me comment out those line of code and just run it and you can see uh, what's going on so so the first line of uh, the line 7 will produce 1 and line 9 will produce 2 so what's the reason? So the reason because the 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 line A, I would just recite a new value to the same variable. So I just replacing. So suppose this box is just for a uh, place apple, but later I want to store different kind of food. So I remove the apple and put the banana inside it. So the box is now the value of uh, the, the stuff inside this box is changing so you see the value is also changing and I also drop this diagram so suppose this is your laptop somewhere you allo uh, allocate two member location one is story a uh, story and integer one and another is story integer two so so when you print out you just print out this uh, value okay let's move forward we'll move to the next one so the next one is uh, everything uh, uh, next one is uh, I, I want to tell you what's the difference uh, is between a reference type and the value type so as you know uh, from last lesson, we know everything in there is an object. So 
if you declare the variable but you didn't assign a value to it so it will be a noun so you, you see you see here so uh, it gives some error says this is no no nonable variable so you must assign uh, before you can use it so I use it because I, I want to print it but I didn't as assign any a, a value to it so it produce this kind of error so back to the diagram so suppose I I declare this first integer and I allo allocate the memory address for it but I didn't assign anything to it so in, in the future so I want to print this but but this one is nothing is is referring re referencing to nothing so I can I can print out what's inside it these boxes right so I just comment out this line uh, comment out this code <laughs> comment this code so we move to the next and then I declare the second variable and give the value to and I assign the second integer's value into the first integer so you see so first I declare this 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 uh this first integer and I give the value is one and then I declare the second integer I give the value as two. Then I I assign the integer second integer's value in to the first integer. So so actually just like this. So the first integer now is reference to the second integer. And the second integer is reference to this value too. So when you bring out this uh, first integer, and I think they both the same value is all the number two. So I can print out this uh, second integer, and we can see. I just comment out this first print statement. Okay, and save and execute this code again. You see, I have a uh, the those two values are the same. Okay, moving to the next one. So the next one is uh, the rule for declare a variable, like identifier. So there is a rule for the identifier. So uh, when, as you see the rule, uh, we the Dart team I uh, highly recommend you using lower camel case. Uh, what's lower camel case? Just like uh, the except the first letter the first 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 word of first letter is a small case then other than that all is uh, all the letter uh, need to be capital and also uh, the identifier can only include numbers letters underscore and the dollar sign so as you see but it cannot start with the number so as you see I, I, I start with the number so it produces an error so I can start I, I can give a variable name uh, which is start with the number and this one is uh, correct because uh, I, I can start uh, with the the dollar sign so th this one is correct but uh, but this one this one is correct and move to the next so we cannot use keyword so the if if is actually it's like a keyword in dar uh, so we cannot use the keyword so if you are using keyword the keyword will be highlight in different colors as you you can see this one is a keyword this one is also the keyword so if you're using keyword you will give the com compile error so the compile won't be able uh, to to let you use it and then we can use underscore right Unders uh, underscore underscore uh, actually uh, this is a, a private variable uh, uh, yeah but uh, it's in I will talk it later you can unlike uh, other fun uh, other language like Java and C++ the past they have a private this keyword to make uh, this attribute this uh, a variable as a private so in Dart, if you want to make this variable or method private, you just uh, uh, start with the underscore. So it will be 
are not accessible from outside. And the last rule is the it's a case sensitive. You see these the force integer and the force integer rows two is actually is the different different variable. And and if I if I change the first one to small case, you see this one you say uh, the first the fourth integer already defined. So actually there are different uh, uh the identifier case sensitive they are different. Okay, we move to next. So the we move to next is the data type. So in in the dar there are eight uh, building data type. So number boolean string list uh, set map rule and symbol. So in today's lesson, I will only talk about the number, boolean, and string. So in uh, the rest, we'll be talking in later video. So, so number, so number, you, you see number also can divide into those two uh, subtype, uh, sub uh, one is integer and it's a double. So let me just quickly come on out this line of code. You can declare you can give the data type as a number uh, because a uh, number is a uh, uh, super type of integer and double so you can give the value either integer or double right okay so move to next so you, you see i first integer i give the one so I, I yeah, there is a, a attribute called runtime type. So you can you you can print the runtime type of this variable to check uh, which type they are, right? So when I check the first integer, it, it is type the type of the first integer is the int before line thirty six, right? In thirty seven. Uh, I assign this double value to this first integer. So in line 38, I print it, it will be converted to double. So it, I think uh, the number is can be like interchangeable. You can either assign uh, int, in, int as well as the double. However, if you declare a variable, like you, you assign the data type as an int, Right, so you give the initial value like one. So the later you want to uh, change it into like a one point zero, it will be uh, producing the error. It says the the value of type double cannot be assigned to value type of int. And the reason for this is so. I think it's the the integer. So the member location assigned for integer actually is just a four byte. For byte and aside for four byte, right? Four four times a is thirty two bit, and and actually aside the double is actually like a sixty four bit. So the lo the memory location for double is more is larger than the integer. So you you can if you declare a, a variable and assign the data type is a double, and you can you you can use you can Assign as a assign integer to it, but you can know like a reverse, just a reverse like this. Yeah, yeah. I I I think I have uh, this uh, example in this code. I will show you later. So the integer, uh, integer, just the the. Yeah, as we already see, it, we can define integer and label it as an integer type. And also the same as the double, so you see this line of code, yeah, line fifty one. So we declare the double, but we assign it integer value, right? But we cannot. But this line of code is uh, produce error. But this line of code won't produce error. So the reason is that the memory allocated for double is a large. Then int. So if so, if you're trying to convert into double, you will lose like a precise. Maybe yeah, you will lose. 
So we move to next is a boolean. So boolean type is very simple. Uh, they have they have only two uh, type of value. One is true and one is false. So we can use it to as a flag to determine our flow control. So uh, I will talk uh, um, more when we using uh, when we uh, to run into the flow control topic. Yeah. So the it's it's just a uh, true and false you see so when you're trying to print the value of is it you will be like says true you can also change it to false right it can be changeable so when now when you're printed you will be like a false and false right okay move to next move to next one is a string so string uh you can you can declare a variable as a string uh, either by a double call or single call yeah it doesn't matter which one you prefer however when you using if you there is a case you need to notice like in this uh, third and fourth string so if you, this is a single if a single comma a single call inside a double call it's okay but if uh, it's a sing single call inside single call, it will be produced error because it, it, uh, the the, com the compiler will think this one is uh, a pair, and they didn't find uh, the, the the rest one is will produce error, right? So you need to give a escape escape character. Also, you can declare the multiple line multiple line of code. Just uh, three, uh, double call or single call. Either either one is fine. Okay, move to next. So the next one is a uh, string concatenation. Okay, sorry, I need to this one. Comment out this one. Let me run the code. You can see the result. So we can easily like a uh, concat two string together. Just use the plus sign. So you see, uh, the first the, the first output will be hello razor, but it didn't have any space between because you see those two are, I didn't have any space between. So in line two, I this this one have a space between. This is called a uh, string concatenation, and another one is called string interpolation. So in string interpolation we can use dollar sign yeah dollar sign and a variable so let me run this code first yeah you see my name is raised if you have a dollar sign it will grab the value inside this variable like a razor you will replace this a uh, second string with the razor so as you see from the terminal you will see my name is razor and if you want to use expression so you need to have uh, this curly bracket so like a one plus one is is two so if you have this curly bracket you will execute this code this line of code first that we use you will calculate it will be two and just add to act back to this string so the string will be one plus one is two Okay, so the next one. So the next one is uh is actually like a type inference. What's the type inference? So in the dar you can you can declare this uh a variable and you didn't specify the te the type. So you give the var keyword. So in this line of code, so let me ask you, you will. This one you will determine by this compile, and when you run it, uh, when when you compile the code, it didn't notice uh, what's the data type of it. You will you will determine what what where you where you write here uh, when it is runtime. So in the runtime, you will check uh, which type uh, you are. So you are string. So after when when it 
notice a uh, UR string, so you can now change back to the other data type like an uh, integer. So here I assign integer to this string variable, you, you give me the compile error. You see here, so I give the var keyword and this should be the integer, right? Yeah, you see, it is the int. Okay, next. So next I will going to talk what is the compile and what is the compile time and run time. So as I mentioned uh, about a lot, so compile time just like uh, uh, the code actually we right now is uh, a human readable code. So actually you need to convert it into machine code so the computer can be so understandable, right? So computer didn't know what's the word you're writing, they just know that like 0 and 1, so you need to con uh, compile our code into machine code. So this, this process will call like a compile time. And the runtime is just simple, we click run the code and and this is just, uh, yeah, when we execute the code, and it's a runtime. Okay, after you know these two concepts, so we were going to the last uh, two keywords, final and constants. So what's final and constants? Yeah, it's uh, just like a constant, just like a, if you declare the variable as a constant. The value can be cannot be changed in later, right? So you see in these constants, I I I declare a variable pi. So uh, as you know, I here I use the small case uh, because uh, the low case is preferred by dark team. So unlike other language, use the capital letter to declare the constants. So um, you see, I declare the pi as a three point fourteen. And I later I cannot change its it is value because it's a constant. So if you declare a variable as a var, as a var, you can change its value, and but you need to keep it as a same type. So I cannot change its value, right? You see here, you produce the error. I think it's the same for the final. So the the constants and the final, uh, you cannot change those value. So what's the difference between constants and final? So the const, uh, the, yeah, let me show the next example so you can see what's the difference be between those two. So the constants keyword, uh, it will be determined by the compile time, right? You see, here I, I create, I, I, I get the data time of, of, of now, you know, every time I run this line of com uh, line, line of code, you will get me like a different time. Yeah, this line of code just get the system time. So every every time I run this line of code, you will give me like a different time step. So it's no constant, right? So it will produce the error. So because constant only check in the compile time. However, if we label as a final, final uh. It will check at the runtime. So we will how how to say yeah each each time each time the value will be determined on the runtime. So in the last one is a dynamic. So the dynamic is uh, you can change it is uh, data type because it is dynamic. You see the first one I keep it the integer value and then I change to double and and then I change to string, so the compile didn't uh, produce any error, so it allowed me to write this code. However, if I write this var, like a uh, uh, str equals uh, one, and later I just change it to, yeah, this one uh, will be produce error. Yeah, so, yeah, I thanks for watching today's tutorial, and uh, I think that's all for today. Yeah, in next video, I'm going to talk about the operators, and yeah, I will see you in next video.
Thank you. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone. So this welcome to my channel. So in this series, we'll be going to talk all about the data programming language. So in the previous lesson, we have learned the data type in DAR and how to declare a variable in DAR. So in this lesson, we'll be going on operators in DAR. So we'll be talking more about uh, what's the type of op op operators in DAR and also what's the different differences between a uh, expression and statement in DAR. So without further ado, let's get started. And also, I have already a uh, pre-code uh, of those uh, examples. So example. So I don't want to like uh, waste waste your time. So just uh, watch my typing. So let's get started. So the first one I want to talk is uh, arithmetic operation in DAR. So you know a uh, expression uh, is composed with is a consists of operand and also uh, operators so it's a similar uh, in mathematics so you can add those two numbers and can you you can subtract uh, subtract subtract those two numbers and you can also multiple a uh, number and also divide number and also you can make a module of number so, but you can see here is a uh, tilde sign uh, before this uh, slash, uh, which is a divider sign. So what's the difference between those two? So the first one, uh, if you uh, divide two numbers uh, in dar, dar will keep will return this uh, decimal point. If, uh, for example, like uh, actually I have a example show here. So uh, I gave the first operand number two and value two, and uh, the second operand is a uh, value three. So if I divide those two, I will get. Let's see what we will get. So if I plus those two, I, I get five, right? So if I minus those two, I will get uh, minus one, and if I, yeah, if I put uh, this um, subtract uh, sign ahead of this operator I, I it's just basically just make it negative so it will be minus 2 is correct so I can also like a multiple those two operands will give me 6 right 2 multiple 3 6 so here comes the important part so if I use the first one to divide the second one which is to divide by 3 so what we will get? I will get you see this is a double right I use two integer but you give me the double because this divide sign so uh, unlike uh, another language for example uh, in in Java or in JavaScript, if you didn't, uh, if you use those two integer number and do the uh, divide, so it will give you the integer. However, in Dart, if you give the two integer number, if they can divide, it will give you like this uh, with the decimal point by default. However, if you uh, play these. Uh, until that side before this divider side, uh, I will make it into integer. So here I will give the zero because uh, two divide by three is zero point six, right? But I convert it to integer, so it will be lose some uh, precision. So you give me zero back, and this one is a modular side. So if I use the first one. Uh, module the second one I will give two because you see because the 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 before one will give zero and then the the last one give the two. So hope I will get hope I you hope you will get a more understanding of those 
arithmetic operator. Okay, so we'll keep move we keep moving on. So let's move to the next part. Let me clear my console. So the next part is the prefix and postfix operator. So prefix uh, operator just you uh, you can use a double uh, plus sign. Uh, to uh, to increment your variable with double plus sign, and you can also decrease decrease your uh, variable's value by using double uh, minus sign. So what's the difference is between if you put those uh, minus sign be uh, ahead of the variable? What's the difference is between these? Uh, so we will see. So I can say if you put a head of these variable, you will first calculate uh, like a 10 plus 1 will be equals like 11. So in this line, you will print 11. However, in this line, you will only print 10 because he will print out this value, then do the like a increment. So we can check. Yeah, you see, it is what I expect. So the first one will give you 11 and the second one will give the 10. So because I, because this line will do calculate first, then print out the value. However, in the second line, this line 19, you will be print out this value first, then calculate, then, then, then increment this variable's value so okay so the same is the same with this uh, a double uh, negative sign it's uh, basically the same thing so the first one you first uh, uh, minus one will be equals nine and then you just print out 10 and do the minus you can see from this console yeah okay we know we can Move to the next point. Next point will be the relationship operators. So as you can see from these uh, my map, so the relationship operator just uh, to compare uh, two values. And let me comment out. Yeah, it's a very a basic uh, comparison. So, so you know the boolean value we have learned from last lesson. So, you you, the, this this is a expression because you can it, it will return the true and false. So, uh, as the example show here, you use three three will be minor uh, will be small than four. So the first line will be false and the second line will be true. So let's see. What's uh, output? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't save it. Okay, let's see. Need to clear. So the first one is false because the, the value is smaller than that. And the second one is true, right? So, yeah, as the, uh, the, the same as the below. Okay, so next one is the next one is the equality equality operator. Let me comment out these relation operators. Okay, in this one we are going to see use the double equal sign to check if those two values are same. So first we run the code to see what's coming out. So the first one will be false, right? Because the five, five is not equal than six. So we use the single uh, equal sign to do uh, assignment. This is just called assignment operator. So we use double equal sign to check if those two values are same. 
So here, this one is a uh, false, and this 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 simple just uh, means no equal, so it will be written true. Okay, next we can also compare the two string, right? So the first one I give the letter A, and the second one I give the letter B, so they are no equal, so you will return false, and then. I use no equal sign, e, e, no equal operator to check those these expressions. So you will return true. Yeah, that's what I'm expect. Okay, so we move to next. Next is a type test operator. So the type test operator will have like a the S keyword, is keyword, and is no keyword. So what this means? Okay, just let me just give you some examples so you will know what it means so suppose we declare this double with type 1 give e some value and integer give some value and also string and boolean so we can use the east keyword to check so is this type is the same one as we declare so so first we clear we output and run the code so the first one is giving the false because the type of one is a double, so it's it is not an int, right? So it will give you the false. However, the second one is a integer type, so so you check if it is an integer, it will give you true. The third one is a string type, so you use the string to check, it will return true. The fourth one is a boolean, so you use boolean, you check is the boolean type. Is the double so you will give you false right because boolean is a boolean tie is not a double tie so as you can see it gives the false so the last one is a boolean type is not a double tie right so this one will give it true because boolean tie is the boolean tie okay so we are going to move to next so here's a quick tip if you want to use the cast like a typecast so it must be the subtype like a in the is a subtype of number and the double is also a subtype of number so you can cast number to integer or also you can cast the num to double so what i mean is uh so what i mean is the number is this number this one this one because this one have a int type and it also have a double type so those int and double is a subtype of this number num is this num so you can cast uh, this one to either this one or this this one okay we move to the next one so the next one will be a size man uh, operator so it just uh, very similar like uh, a rest make uh, operator just more easier okay so all the source code I will uh, put, put on my github page so you can check my github page and to in, in my github repository so switch back to this uh, example this one and also clear out the output so let me run the code first. Yeah, so as you can see, these these expression are just very similar, like a uh, like this. So you equals operator nine plus operator ten. So they are the same. So this is just a shortcut. Yeah, just the syntax sugar. So it let you write code more faster. And also, you see, uh, when I first print out the value will be three. So after that, I uh, add out those two numbers. So this one will be seven. So which one? Yeah, is correct. So how about this? This one. This one is a uh, end sign. So if you, so first we we check the result. The result was a. Uh, uh, it's a 2 right this uh, operand 11 is a 2 yeah because I really didn't do anything to this one however if you're using this n equals will give you 
still keep you two, right? So you will wonder why it still keep two. So this one, actually, uh, we need to write this number two into like a byte. So it'll be zero from right to left will be zero one zero zero, and the three from right a uh, convert to byte from right to left will be one one zero zero. So if you use an operator, so only the second second number will be one because zero and one will be zero, one and one will be one, zero and zero will be zero. So as you can see, this is a result. So the result convert back to integer will be still be two, right? Because this one is the same as this one, operand 11. So you can see this is a double two. Uh, line 71 is a two and line 74 is a, also a two. So I hope you get more understand. Okay, we move to the next one. So the next one I'm talking about, I want to talk is a logic operator. So the logic operator. Let me first come out the example first. So the logic operator just basically on two boolean values. So suppose I give the operand 13 is a true and operand 14 is a false. So if I end those two value, so what do we get? We will get false, right? Because true and end false will give a false. Yeah, something like likely comment. So what I may, what I want to like uh, point out is this line eighty four. You see, so what's the differences between the eighty three and eighty four? You see, th this one is a uh, more efficient. The eighty line eighty four because you're using because first you will evaluate the first one. If it is true, so you are not going to evaluate the second one because you're using odd operator, right? You're using double or and the first one already true. So it, it know so you will guarantee the whole expression will be true. So you just more this this line of code just more efficiency. So personally I recommend you using the syntax like a 84. So it's a uh, as the same as the end operator. So you, you if you only use the single one an operator, you need to evaluate two operand and combine it to then and then finally eva evaluate the whole expression. However if you use the double end operator, so you only will check the first one. So you will be much efficient. Okay, so we move to the next one. So the last one I'm going to talk is uh I think it's this uh byte wise and shaped operator. As you can see from here, so byte wise as the same you need to let me clear out my console first. Yeah, still you need to figure out what's the byte code. Of those two value will be zero zero one zero from or one one from right to left right. So if you end those two value using the end operator, the single one, you are pretty. It's time you are like still two right because your the zero and one will be zero one one will be one. So this line will be value to zero zero one zero. So will be still two right you can see from here and this one will be I think it will be three because after evaluate it will be zero you're using this all operator so one or one will be one one or one zero or one will be one 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 will also be one so the result will be this one this one will be converted to integer will be three so this one, this one is a XOR operator. So what's what's what? How it works? 
you will also you will only to uh, the the differences will make it true, the same will make it false. So because zero and zero will be same, so be still be zero 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 still zero one one still zero, and uh, zero and one will be one. So the result will be zero 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 one. Yeah, because only differences is the the right first number. So you only choose the differences. So it will be zero 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 one. So which is the one. So also the last one. Last one is the double uh, small size and double large size. So what what's it? So it just times. Uh, I think it's just uh, times use uh, times two to the power two, right? So, and this one will be operand fifteen divide to to the power two. You see, so if uh, operand fifteen will be three, so I just divide shape to shape those two. So what I will shape will be one one zero zero. So you see, uh, will be uh four plus a will be uh twelve, right? Because this one is one, uh, this one is two, this one is four, this one is a. So four plus a will be twelve. So if you divide divide four, you're using two divide four will be zero because. Yeah, it's not enough to divide, so we will return the zero. Okay, so I hope you get more understanding of the uh, these uh, operator in Dart. So, also the last one, last thing I want to mention is the expression and the statement. So the statement just uh, expression need every have a component. So it. You need add these two component. One is the operand, and another is the operator. So you can see all the operators we're using will be like a expression. For example, like in the previous code we write this one, only just call this function. So this line of four, line four will be just like a statement because it didn't evaluate any value. Any it didn't calculate and it didn't evaluate any like expression. Yeah. However, in the example of uh, some of the code we write, so it's kind of considered to be an uh, expression. Okay. So I think that's all for today's lesson. So if you have any com if any question, feel free to comment below. So I will. Uh, Try my best to answer your question, and also I will keep up uploading my Dart programming language. So because here we just in the lesson three, so there is a uh, four more. Yeah. Thank you for watching my video. Yeah, I will see you in next video. Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. So in today's lesson, we are going to talk about the collection in Dart. So before we dive into today's lesson, so here I just give you a quickly remind. So this channel is all about uh, for start web and mobile development. So please subscribe to my channel. So if uh, if you're interested in how to uh, become a full star developer and this is our uh, fourth uh, lesson so if you haven't uh, watched my previous lesson about that so I highly encourage you to check my previous lecture so without further ado let's get started so as you can see from this mind map so I, I briefly divide today's uh, into three parts so first, I will give you a brief introduction about the method, and then I'll give you the introduction about what's the function, and finally, I will talk about the call in collection in Dart. So let's get started. So 
So what is the function? So the function uh, in computer science, uh, in function just uh, a block of a code perform a specific task. As you can see from the start overflow, a function uh, is uh, just a piece of a code that is called by name and it can be passed the data to operate and operate on and can optionally return the data. All data is passed to a function is explicitly passed. So a method or on the other hand is a piece of code that is called by a name that is associated with an object. So uh, you can you can simply just uh, remember in this way. So you can uh, say like method need to be called by an object. However, if the function it just uh, we can just call the function uh, simply but just by their name. So you can see uh, from our first lecture, uh, we have write these uh, print function. So we can just call, just use the print name, print the function name, print, and to trigger this function. Okay. Also, uh, next we're talking about the function. So function uh, are usually uh, divide into uh, two parts. The first one is the building function. And the second one is a user defined function. So what's the building function? The building function, uh, just the functions, they are uh, predefined by DAR. And they are part of the uh, library. So all we can do, all we can do just to use their uh, by the function name. And however, they, they are also have a, like a user defined function. So user defined functions are the function the uh, user create a then self. So, and I, you can see here I have a uh, another lesson talking about so the the function in detail. So what's the function? What's the parameter? And what's the return type? And don't don't worry if you didn't know. So I will give you a more detail into a function in the coming lesson. So here, uh, just uh, quickly remind you, uh, you just need to remember uh, what's a, basically, what's the function, what's the method, what's the differences. And because we are going to use the method in our collection. And the collection we have, so in our collection, I uh, have uh, the three core building collection, the list, uh, set, and map. So unlike uh, uh, other programming language, that don't have a large collection of building data structure, but you can also uh, perform a lots of uh, lots of tasks uh, covered by different uh, situations. And here I already uh, write this code ahead, so I don't want to waste your time just uh, uh, watching my typing. So I, I hope I can talk more in detail about a lot of a collection, how to use them. So I let, let's go from the first one, the list. So what's the list? So a list a list uh are probably the most common data structure uh used in DAR. So here is the uh, the first line will be just a syntax about how to define a list. So as you can see, so I define a list just using a square bracket and inside square bracket I I have put three elements. All of them are integers. So we're using var keyword because Dart is a smart language. They can do type inference for you. So when you move your mouse uh, into the variable, you declare in here, list one. So as you can see, that already know. So you are trying to declare a list type. And the element inside a list is a integer. So if, uh, for example, uh, if I change the integer three to string three, so we already talked about a string in that. So in, in that, if we trying to uh, 
statically a variable as a string, I we just using either a single uh, quotation mark or double quotation mark. You see here, uh, we move um, our mouse on this uh, variable. We can see uh, the type will be changed to list object. So as we can, as we know in Dart, everything would be an object. However, uh, I don't recommend you put like a different type in the list. So I highly recommend just put the same type in the list. So uh, I will talk uh, the why I encourage you to in this way. So I will talk uh, more when we are uh, talking about the map a function in the list. So here I just run my code. You can see we have uh, declared our first list. So uh, another way to declare uh, list uh, is using uh, this uh, class. But you see here is a line through through a uh, line through the list class because uh, this method is a uh, decrypted. So so how I, how do I know uh, this already deprecated? So the reason is I go to check the dark library. So uh, I, don't worry, I will share this uh, link in description below. So as you can see here, so we create this using their default constructor. So the, so this, the, this one is we are using is what we are using now in here. So it already be the pre deprecated. So I don't I recommend using this way. And also, you will be a produce error in uh, the compile if you dar if you have a, a latest dar version. So we don't uh, recommend you using this way. So here and the survey is is the, is the same already decrypted, but you can specify the type. Yeah, this one is also decrypted. So I just commented out this one. So we're using this one, this one. So uh, you can specify the type. So what's the type? Uh, the, t the, the type just uh, you declare. So what kind of element you want to store in this list? So if you declare in this way, so you cannot put like other type, like uh, for example, like string or double, you cannot put string and double into this list. So this the list already have a, like a type of constraint. So as you can see here. So we run the code, you can see it is an empty list. Here you can see here, it's an empty list. Okay, we move to next. So the next one is and talking about the index in in Dart. So the index just uh like a position. So in the list, uh, for example, they have a uh, three item in this uh, list of fruit, and they all string. So when so I we using a var keyword uh, to do the type of inference. So you will be like a list of a string, yeah, as you can see here. And if we're using, so the first element will have uh, index zero, and then and then the first one will have index one, or oh, and then then second will have index one, and third will have index two. So if you're trying to access the first element, you just using uh, this way. So you're using a square square bracket and place the index of the element so you can access so you can see here I print out the first element in this uh, list of rules array so if I change to one so I run my code again I will I will get the banana then we're going to uh, the list length method so the list uh, Store length method would be uh, 
give you uh, the total length of the array. So when you run the code, you will see the total number of uh, element in this array in this list will be three. Okay, move to next. We can also add the element, add the element in array. So how do we add the element? So we're just using the add method. So we add element into this array. So so now currently our array would have a uh, uh, four element: banana, uh, apple, banana, peach, and mango, as you can see here. So because we have uh, the list of a uh, string type. So if we are trying to add like a number three, it will uh, Sorry, the, the, the compile that, the compile will produce the error. You won't allow you to do this. Okay, we move to next. We can also add another list to the existing list by just using add all. So uh, remember, you need to pass a whole list. So, so after we execute this line of uh, code, so we'll get uh, apple, banana, peach, mango, orange, and strawberry. So remember, we need to pass the array or list in here. So suppose we give only like two elements, you are, the compiler will produce error. And also we can remove the element in this. So we're just using the remove method. So we're giving the index of the element we want to remove. For, for here, for this example, we're giving the index zero. So we want to remove the apple in this uh, list of fruit list. So after we run the code, so we can see the apple is removed. And another example would be, so you want to remove the element, but you, you don't know what's in that. So you can use the index of this method to find the index of the orange. So for in this example, so the, in, the orange would be index 3, because index counting from 0. So you can see 0, 1, 2, 3. So the orange will have uh, index 3. So after executing this line, we'll get the index 3. So we remove index 3, so we will eventually remove the orange in our list. So we just execute this code. So you see, the orange already removed from our list. And the last one would be like uh, you want to like uh, remove all the elements in the list. So you can, you, uh, you can just using the clear method. So the clear method will remove all the elements inside this list. So after I run the code, you can see that now our list will be empty. So you may wonder how I know uh, all of those methods. So I, I, I can, so to tell the truth, I don't remember all of those methods because uh, when you go to the operation uh, list uh, reference, you see there are lots of methods for example like a, a clear uh, every expand a fold uh, for each get range index of yeah index of we are we are using uh, just now there are all kinds of different methods you cannot remember all of them so what i'm trying to like uh, teach you just uh give you a brief uh introduction of those uh, methods so when you actually use the list so you will get more understanding of the so I highly recommend uh, watch though the, this this uh, trying to uh, release a document uh, frequently so you will get a more uh, understand uh, when to use what kind of method and the, and the last one would be the map method in Dart. So uh, I give you another example. So suppose you want. You have a array like a list of movies. So you want add, you want add a string uh, before each movie. So you want add like a, I love it, I love this movie to before each one. So 
what you can do is you using this math method. So the math method append a uh, prepend the this string. So before each item. So let me run like this code first. You see here. This one is a line fifty three. So however you 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 see this is a normal bracket, it's no square bracket. So this is a this is a iteratable object. So it's not a list. So for example, you need to call this to list method, convert this uh, iteratable object to the list. So you need to pass this uh, function, the function. Uh, what you, you, uh, so what you want to do for each of item. So you pass uh, this, this function uh, simply means you want to grab the each movies and you need to uh, add, you, you need to uh, prepend kind of a string before each movie. So the, this one is just a variable, so you can name it anything you want. Suppose I can end like an integer m. So just be persistent. So you need also, it's just kind of a, a variable. So if you uh, name e m, you, you can you need also change the variable. So in this, uh, but I, I, I still recommend you using something like a uh, meaningful. So, okay, that's all about the list in Dart. So next we are going to talking the set in Dart. So unlike the list, set would be like an order. So, so list is a uh, order because uh, so you can, um, you'll find an uh, element using like an uh, index. So it's a uh, it kind of have some kind of order. However, uh, the set is uh, an order and also the set can not have uh, the same like item. So if you're trying to add like a uh, duplicate, like a uh, element in the set, uh, you will be uh, not going to add it. So, okay, so First, we're going to give you the syntax of how can you declare the set. So you can declare the set simply using the bar keyword. It's the same, but you're using this curly bracket. So uh, thanks to uh, our type inference, we know we, we know uh, we our variable have the set type and the element inside this set would be integer. So after we run this code, we can see we have a, a set, a set of uh, integer. So and another one is you can is basically uh, declare the type you want. So you can declare here. So you give a three integer. Then if you're giving trying to give a three, the string three, uh, the compile will be produce error. And however, uh, here is uh, uh, something I want you to know. So if you try using this one, so if you just give it like a curly bracket, it actually will uh, create a map. So don't worry, we'll be talking the map uh, later. So as you see, when you move your mouse in this empty uh, map a variable, you see the type inheritance will said this is a kind of map, it's not a list. So if you want to declare a list, so this this one is a is a good practice. And also you can just uh, uh, tell you tell the, the compile say this one uh, is a set an integer. So you don't do the type inference here because uh, for in this case it, it is no less smart than human. There. So after we run this code, we can see the first one would be, yeah, this one would be empty, empty list. And this one is also empty, or oh, empty set, sorry. And this one is also an empty set. So this one will be empty map because I print out it, uh, it is runtime type. You can see here, 
So the runtime type will be linked hash map. Okay, move to the next. So in list, we, we can also add element into the list. So simply just using the add method. And also we can add multiple elements into the set. So we're using add all method. It's the similar uh, in similar like a uh, list. We can also check we can also check the length of the set. So you see here uh, the first set would be three elements. So I'm trying to add those two elements so the set will be total have five elements. So for example, I'm trying to add the same element into the set one. So the 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 set will not allow duplicate. So you see, only uh, graphs will be added to the set of rules. So the, now the set of rules have a length of four. You can also remove element from the set just using the remove, and you just type uh, the element you want to remove. And also, uh, unlike the list, you can also check the element is already exists in the set. So in here, so we want to check if uh, the set contain, uh, contains the graphs here. So you will be putting the true. Yeah, as you can see, it's a true. And next, uh, you can also check uh, multiple items. So you can use contains all. So you just pass a list of items you want to check. So this one will be true, watermelon and banana. So you will see true, true or false. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I, 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 my mistake. So because banana is still inside in this one, only watermelon inside the set of rules too. So you will produce false. And the last one would be you can use content all to check this one. Yeah, I think it's the same. Those two will be the same. Just a different way of declare. So you can uh, you can declare a variable and just pass the variable in here. You can also just pass this this directly. Also, you can you can check you can the intercept. You can combine those two sets. Or also you can just find the intersection of the two sets. So here, the first example, I'm trying to find the intersection of the two sets. So you, as you can see, the intersection of the two sets will be the orange. Yeah, yeah. Here is the orange. It's the common element among those two sets. And also we can like uh, take it unique with two different sets. So here I can re uh, unit uh, those two sets. But you remember only the different element will be produced. So the same element will be ignored. Okay, this is all about the set. So the reason I know all the maths are because yeah, I checked the documentation. So they provide all the edit all the methods and attributes in the set. So uh, don't worry, I'll put this link in the description. So I highly encourage you to check the docu official documentation uh, frequently. But don't worry, if you still uh, have any problem, you can uh, comment out below so and I will answer you. I will try my best to answer you. Okay, so the last one we are talking in collection would be the map. And map is just a very uh, specific type in, in Dart. So unlike a list and set, uh, it's using a key and value pairs. So, so here I just give you a quick uh, example of what is the map. So map using the key and value pairs. So the key would be, so for example, in this one, I declare a map of capitals. So the key would be a country and the value would be 
the capitals. So when I print this, this one, I can see I have a list of a uh, country with capitals, country with capitals, country with capitals. Yeah. So if you want trying, if you want to clear a map, so you can either use the first one we declare a, a here this one. This this one. Yeah, we just using the empty and we use the var keyword to do the type inference. And also we can use the class uh, the class constructor. So because uh, the, this one is uh, they, they they still use this nowadays so it's no decrypted. So we can still using this one, this this constructor to create the empty map. You can also create a map by job, uh, just uh, explicitly uh, tell the dial what type you want. So you want the integer to be the key and the string to be the number. So for example, after you declare in this type, so you, you can only like uh, uh, put your key number number to your key and value to your string uh, the string to your value so for example we declare these uh, numbers to map uh, give the integer as a key and so you see we're using this one is the key so we're using like a, a square bracket to assign the value to, to this key so in this example we have uh, three key the one, two, three, the integer one, integer two, integer three, and we have uh, three uh, values. So the string one, string two, string three. So when we print out, so you can see, so here, but remember this will, will be the integer. Yeah, this will be the string. And we can also check about the length of the map. So I think here would be three because we have three pair. As you can see here, we have three pair, and if you if you're trying to access the value, so we can use like uh, the is the same as the. So you're just using using the key to access its value. So for example, so we're using the key two, so the output will be the string two. And also, you can check you you can check all the keys. Or can if the map contains specific key so you just call contains key this method so i think you will be returned true because we in our our map contain the number two and we can also print out all the keys uh, within this map so we're using map, uh, number two dot keys will pre will print out all the keys as you can see here it will be one two three integer one two three as you see here is a normal bracket, so it will be like a iteratable object. It's an iteratable object. You can either convert it to like a list using to list method, method, convert into a list. So now when you print again, so you can see here, I convert this iteratable object to list. Okay, so the last two would be, you can also uh, print out all the values in this map. So for example, I will print out the one, two, three, those three different strings. As you can see here, it's also a uh, iteratable object. You can convert to list by using to list method. And also you can remove the the key key pair uh, in this map. So what you can do is just using the key. So if you remove the key, so the, the value will be also removed. So in this example, I remove the key too. So uh, and then I bring this uh, numbers map again. So I can only see these uh, one and string one, uh, keys number three, and string number a uh, uh, string three. And also, I highly recommend to check this uh, official documentation. So to try different method, so have a better understanding of all the different methods. So I think that's all for today's lecture. So uh, feel free to comment out below uh, if you encounter any error or have something question. So I will always try my best to help.
uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so I will continue upload the video so in the next lesson I will be going to talk about the classes in Dart okay thanks for watching I will see you next time hello everyone welcome back to my Dart programming series tutorial so this tutorial is end for the beginner who never touch about any Dart programming language but want to learn about the Flutter so in the, this is our uh, fifth uh, tutorial about Dart programming language so if you haven't checked my uh, previous lesson so feel free to uh, check my previous video learning about Dart how to set up the environment and how how to declare a variable and know some uh, basic data type and how to do the operate between two uh, operand and also know some knowledge about the collection so in today's video and we are going to talk the flow control in Dart okay without further ado let's get started uh, as before I have already uh, written down the code so you don't need to uh, waste too much time just watching uh, my typing so and I, I hope I can talk more in detail and give you more explanation uh, line, line by line so you can have more understanding of, of what's going on so first I'm going to give you a quick uh, definition about the flow control in Dart so they actually uh, so as you can see there are two type of uh, control flow in Dart programming language so the first one is a sequential control flow and the other one would be uh, iterative control flow so what's the differences between them so the sequential uh, manner so where uh, a control structure ensure its statement are uh, executed sequentially uh, however, if it's uh, iterative uh, flow control, so you will make sure the code will uh, will execute uh, iteratively. So, uh, if you haven't get a clear understanding of uh, what's different between two, uh, no worry, we'll give you a real life, uh, real coding example, and um, talking more about. Uh, what's different between those two so actually uh, if you need to uh, write your uh, flow control in there so there are some keywords you need to uh, know before like uh, if else statement and for loop while loop and do while loop and also like a break keyword and continue keyword and a switch statement and final will be assert so let's go uh, from the first one how we make a decision in the DAR so as you can see the, the first one we are going to talk is the if statement so the syntax will be a very simple so the syntax will be first you write if keyword and you put a condition so if the, if the condition is true so uh, the, the statement inside this curly bracket will be executed so for example we have uh, we declare a variable called is hungary is hungary so since we using star inference so we know this 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 type of uh, variable will be have a boolean so if we put the boolean type the, the the value will be true, so this statement will be executed. So, so we can see if we run the code, we will see going to e statement will be printed out in the console. However, if we uh, uh change this value to false, and if we run the code again, so we 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 didn't see anything print out to the console because this line statement will be not executed. So this is uh, actually like a it's a sequential control flow. So it just uh, executes a statement from a top to bottom, and it so in based on the condition uh, render which uh, render to render. So uh, 
Oh, which line? Okay, so we're moving to next. The next one would be uh, if else statement. So, so for this example, so we have is Hungary uh, to be false. So other than that, any statement will be uh, and, and will be executed if uh, the is Hungary to be. Uh, true like for example so I change this back to uh, true so first we we run this code and you you see what I'm talking so we run the code again so you can see if the hungry is true so we can see we are going to eat and however if uh, it's going to if I change this statement to force this variable to force uh, first, I need to comment this out. Sorry. So, and I execute this code again. So you will see I'm a no hungry. Have a better idea now. Okay. So also uh, we have another a uh, statement like a call else if the else if statement. So the syntax would be. First, you give the first condition, then you are giving the second condition. So other than those two, so all the can all other than those two condition, so the code will be executed here in the else statement. So for example, I give the uh, I declare a variable call time, and I give it uh, like a string type of morning. So if the time is equal to morning, so you see this expression will be a value to true so this line will be executed so it will print out this good morning so let's see yeah you see the good morning is print out on the console so if we change this to afternoon so i think the line 23 will be executed so we will see good afternoon in the console right so if we if other than that, so for example, if like a, if I type a, e, evening, so sorry, this one evening. So even I didn't say this one would be uh if condition would be evening, but because the, it will first check the first condition, so it didn't match. So you will go to the second condition, it didn't match. So so you will. Just go to the last and print out the last one. So you will give you good evening, right? So and also we can specify like a multiple else if statement. So you can see. So we can have a multiple else statement, and it's allowed. So it's just uh, basically for like a condition and making. So only one of those. The statement will be executed. Only one of those. So another a shortcut for this is L statement. So if you only have two condition, like a, like a, the, this one, like this one, so we can using a ternary operator. So what's ternary operator? So it's kind of like shortcut. So for example, you want to compare two values. So the easy way you you write it's like a, you're using to compare if a is greater than b. So you assign the first value. Other than that, you are, you will be side and the second value. So first, let me run the code. You see the the result, and we can uh, talk more. So you see the the result will be set to three because the b is the largest one so you see the 2 is is smaller than b so you will be assigned the second value to its result so this line of code is simply the same as the first one you see so first you you compare this to number so if b is greater than that so you assign a so if a is smaller than b so you assign b to the result so it did just uh, just just the syntax sugar, yeah, for you to write this code more more easily, yeah, and concisely, yeah.
So another one. So are we talking the iterative control flow now? So the first one would be the for loop. So the syntax for for loop would be so you give the iterator in the statement. So like for example, so in this line of code, I will print out the zero, one, two, three, and four. Oh, total is five times. Since we start from the zero, yeah. Here, maybe I need to give some. You can see more clearly. Yeah. So from here, we have a zero, one, two, three, and four. Totally five number. Yeah, because four is smaller than five, so the you will stop when it ends to 5 yeah also 5 is not going to print out in the console so there is another way so you can use uh, it's a for enhanced loop but before that I will talking about how we using for loop inside to check the element in array so in array we can get the, the arrays the length of array using uh, array dot len this attribute so we can get len of array so so we write this line of code so first we declare a variable and start from zero so basically you will start from zero and end with the last element because you see the last element would be four so if i is smaller than four since the index start from zero so you see you will bring the index will go from one uh, zero one two three and stop stop at four so you see we bring uh, we're using uh, then this uh, uh, this uh, square bracket to access the element so you you will see all the number print out in the console so let's go to print it out yeah you see I, I print out all the elements in this array. So another way to print out uh, the, the element inside the array, so we can use for enhanced loop. Uh, simply just declare a uh, variable. This one is means uh, each element in this then list. Uh, so I print out this element. Yeah, it's the same in the previous. The output will be the same. So you see, so the last one will be four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Yeah, those the same. So what's the differences between those two? So if you're using this way, you can access the index. So for example, if you're trying to access the index and all the index will be uh, useful in the future, I recommend you using this way. However, if you didn't consider like index anymore, so you can use it this way just for a uh, show hand, show card, yeah. Okay, so we move to next one. We can also do some like a condition, a decision condition making inside this uh, loop. So for example, uh, we have a list of number and I want to print out uh, only the old yeah, it's an old number, no old number. I want only print out the old number. So let's see. I will print out the, okay, first let me to separate it. Yeah, all the number will be print out four to six. You see, since we check if uh, the element mode 2 will be 0, I print out this value. So you can see after execute this line, I will get 6, 2, and 4. I can, so we can make a, like a, a condition check inside the for loop. So also we have uh, another loop kind of, uh, it's called while loop. So what's while loop? While loop is simply uh, the will be the same as the for loop, but you can just 
a first declare is a variable outside this condition so you're using th this one you declare the count variable and you just check the count variable if it is small or equal than 10 so you print out this value but remember you need to uh, increase this counter this count because if you did if you forgot this line of code uh, so you will make a infinite do so you you probably will run something like a, st a stack overflow let's run this line of code so i think we will print out a 1 to 10 yes 1 to 10 you see 1 to 10 yeah okay so next go next one is a do while statement do while just grab this divider okay so you see uh, the do while uh, maybe which is it will run this this line of code first then you will check this condition if it goes true if it's true so you will continue run this code other than that it will be like a stop after the condition is for so let me run the code first you can see here I think we have the door state true since we change the state in here so you will first print out the current state since the open is true so after that I change the open to false so this condition will be uh, no true as a false so you will be you will be stopped after this one okay so next one is those two keywords a break and continue so what's the break and continue so let me grab these divider first okay divider first okay maybe I comment out this one will be more clear to see Okay, let me clear my console and run okay so because if I check if the element is equal to 2 I just break out this loop you see so this whole loop will be stopped after I use this breakout statement you see it will break out the outer loop so for example if I have a double double for loop like a next for nested for loop so if I using break inside this second for loop, I will only break out this nested for loop. So the next one will be continue. So what's the differences between a uh, break and continue? A uh, continue is kind of skip. So you will skip the print the number two and you will print zero one. Uh, I think it will be 0, 1, 3, 4, you see here because you will skip the two continue like a it kind of like a, you will continue ex executing this line you will ignore this line of code okay the next one will be switch statement so what's switch statement so for example you have a this variable and you need to check you need to give uh, run different kind of uh, you, you need to make different situation uh, based on this variable so uh, you can do it using like if else statement but you are you, you will be probably like a write too much if else statement so the switch case is uh, just more more readable yeah you can you can using this one so for example so you put the condition here so if this if the day is equal to zero so I just print out the Sunday you can see but you need to make sure every uh, line of code you have a break statement so since because if you didn't have a list break statement so you will you will first check in me this one you will also uh, print out those two if you if you didn't have this line of code so you actually print those two but since the visual QQ is so smart and you already point out our like error the compiler already give out our error 
So I think it's a very good to write down the break statement after uh, each case, you see. So if you didn't find uh, the, the one, so you will go to the default case, which is something go wrong in here. So for example, I uh, first I give it zero, zero, so I think it will be printed out Sunday. So let's see. Yeah. So if I give it something like a 10, so it will be go to the last line, the default one will be something wrong. Right, yeah, you can see here. Okay, so I think the last one will be assert. So assert just like, so like for condition check. So things we are using the latest star version. So you already is the non saver with non safety. So, if you're using a dark code like version is uh, earlier, so if you uh, execute this line of code, so you will throw the error. If you meet this, if you didn't meet this statement, you will be throw the error. However, in this line of code, it didn't. I, I didn't see any anything here. Yeah, I print out the value will be now because I didn't assign anything. To it, I just declare it. I didn't assign anything. Okay, so I think that's all for today. And this is just a very short video. And I just give you quickly understand uh, how to uh, write con a flow control in Dart. So in the coming lesson, I'm going to talk the classes. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, see you in next video. Hello everyone, welcome back to my 4 Star Academic YouTube channel. So this is our uh, programming, uh, DAR programming for the beginner uh, tutorial series. So uh, in today's lesson, I we going to talk about the classes in DAR. So as you know, everything in DAR would be an object. So how can you initiate an object and how can you going to use it would be much important. And before we start, so if you haven't checked my previous tutorial, so I highly recommend go back to check my previous lesson and learn the basic knowledge about it there. And if you like my video, uh, please thumbs up my content. My uh, also uh, subscribe to my channel. I will keep uploading uh, what I know and about the. And then, and then I will keep uploading the knowledge about a uh, four star developer. Uh, four star, I will keep uploading uh, the video about four star development. So, either in web and the mobile. So, without further ado, let's get started. As you can see from this, uh, this mind map, and I already uh, list out today's agenda. So we just follow uh, those keywords and I will give you a more understanding about what classes and how you're going to use in Dart. And also I will uh, cover all the syntax, how you can declare classes uh, in Dart. And I have also uh, prepared those uh, files uh, ahead since I don't want to uh, waste your time just uh, watching me like typing uh, so I, I hope I can talk more detail of, and give you more explanation about each line of code and what's the syntax and how going to what's the syntax sugar and what's the what, what's some tips and advice so let's keep going so the first one I'm going to talk about is the uh, concept of uh, classes. So what's the classes? So in my opinion, so the classes are just a blueprint uh, for the object. So suppose you are trying to uh, build a new, new house, so you need uh, your, your print, you, you need your blueprint. So the house you build uh, will be an object. So and each object will have uh, it is a property and operation methods. 
So they together call members of the classes. So in there, so how can we going to declare a classes? So we're using the class keyword. So as I mentioned here, and also followed by class keyword would be an identifier for the class. So remember, unlike uh, the variable will declare and the method will declare, method name will declare. So it's not follow the camel case. So you must, the first letter must to be capital. So like example, so the person, the first, first P would be capital. And also uh, every class you have uh, it is member so which is uh, the property and the method so they are going to uh, write inside this curly bracket as you can see here so first we're going to declare the instant variable so which will be held by every object when you create and this person object so as you can see here so the latest star uh, is support non-safety so you must initialize the variable uh, before uh, you're going to use it right so as you can see here so that already uh, support non-safety so if uh, you if you want uh, it, if you want to declare a variable may have a value now so you need to add this a uh, question mark after the data type so here so I, i'm going i'm going to talk you why I, I add this quotation mark in here so first i i declare a variable called name and it's a instant variable uh belong to this person class so you maybe have non value and also I declare a gender as a string type it may have also a non value and the last I, I declare an integer value called age and assign is a default value so if you uh, declare a variable and assign uh, it is value so every like a person object you create will have the default value, uh, age uh, is equal to zero like this so and also um, you can declare the method you see you can declare the method so just type the uh, return type you can also ignore the return type so if uh, if you only have a single statement so inside your method you can either uh, using uh, this syntax so this is just a error function and this uh, you will return this one this is a uh, like a just a shortcut and also you can also declare a, a method and you pass a parameter and you can access to your object using a dollar dollar sign and uh, along with your variable name you can access so if you're trying to uh, create an object using this blueprint so how you're going to create so this is a syntax so you can use uh, you first you need to specify the data type so in here we specify the data type will be the person and we key and we create using this this would be called the constructor of this class so you see we already we write this uh, constructor so this would be a default constructor so if you, you if you didn't write write down this line of code the DAR will automatically write for you so you see we call this constructor so it will uh, build this object for us and so I think uh, we, we, we know the type inference of our DAR so we can also use the var keyword and when you move your mouse on this variable you can see the dart is very smart and they know we are going to declare a variable and it is type would be the person 
and also we can just ignore this new keyword yeah the is the send as the first one so after you declare a variable so you can access to its property so using the doc so I assign the first person and I giving the name would be my name razor and I assign his gender would be male and also it is age would be 26 so I assign those value using doc and then I can print out uh, the value inside it so let me comment now so the underline code first so I'm going to uh, run my code so you can see my console the console would be uh, razor male and 26 yeah it's exactly what I'm going uh, what I'm assigned to my per first person object and also we can create uh, we can call the method inside this class uh, usually just by its name uh, associated with my fir uh, first person object because the because everything uh, my object have uh, access to uh, all the property inside here so I can call it a method just using the object uh, dot eating object dot working and pass the parameter need by this uh, method working method so you are going so when I write this code again you will see I print out razor is eating and razor is working on downtown you see uh, just those two lines of code and also uh, as I mentioned about the class just a blueprint uh, for the object so you can create another object uh, and assign different name and different gender different age so here I create a second a person so I using this uh, constructor default constructor and I assign it is then to Sarah so and also I trying to create the third person and assign it is name would be Lucy so when I trying to first I'm going to print out the second person's name and second person's gender and second person's age so before I'm going to print it so I, I am I know this one will be uh, the value will be now and this one will be zero uh, before we didn't uh, because we didn't assign a second person gender you see and it is uh, not available so it will be default uh, will hold the value none as a default and this one will hold the zero as default so when I print it I will know so the second pip, second person's name will be Sarah and it is gender will be none and it is age will be zero so let's run out this code yeah you see it's, it's, it's the Sarah none and zero yeah it's the same so the last one and I think will be print out the Lucy and you will see uh, it's print the Lucy right so in this example we create uh, three differences object and they hold their own property like name gender and age and the class is just the blueprint you can imagine this as just a factory so you produce different product the same product and uh, from the sa from a single uh, factory so after we just after we briefly talking about how to use classes so so next one I'm going to talk about the type so the classes uh, will be divided to building classes and the user devices so as you can see here the person classes will be the user devices because it's written by me and the de the building classes in there would be the something like this set and map so as as I uh, talked to you in previous uh, video the collection in there so you can see we can create a list using new keyword and we can create a set also using this new keyword and you can also create this map 
yeah you can ignore this new keyword because uh, it's the same thing it's just a shortcut so after that we are going to talk about another uh, concept named constructor so you already see here uh, this one is a default constructor but you didn't know what's the constructor so what is useful so I will give you a more detail about the constructor so so I use the same example uh, I wrote in the last uh, classes dot dar. So I use the same person classes, and you see this is the name, gender, and age. So as you can see here, here is a constructor. So it's called a generated constructor. Uh, it's not a default one because we. I explicitly write down our the constructor by our own so as you can see here so I write this and also uh, another important step is that we can only write one generative constructor per plus so suppose I write uh, I trying to write this uh, default constructor so the compiler will be give me an error says the constructor will be already exist right you see that so I can know like a, a declare to like a gener, uh, generative constructor. However, I can declare uh, like multiple name constructor. So I will talk about name constructor later. So first I'm going to talk this uh, generative constructor. So what's generative constructor? So it means when you create an object, so you can just uh, pass it is value, something like this. You can pass it as a name and gender and age. Just um, after that, it kind of a similar the method. So you pass the parameter, and you will create this object with the same uh, value. As you see, you pass the red. I, I pass the razor. So the razor will be assigned to the instant va variable hold by. Uh, this uh, first person object so the, the this keyword this keyword just point to the object itself so in this case so the first person the, so the this will be point to to the first person so i i assign first person's name to the razor and first person's gender to male and first person's age to 26 so it's he like this so let me comment out the rest of the code and just run you can see here i print out the reason male and 26 so it's much uh, easier you see compared to the first uh, example in this one we're using default constructor so i we need to write these three lines of code just to assign it is like property However, if we we using constructor, so we can like ignore these three lines of code just using just pass to the constructor as the parameter. Yeah, it's it's more easy and quick way. And and however, um, there is a syntax sugar. So if you can, if you don't want to write this, you can. This is. This one is a syntax sugar, so it it probably do the same stuff as this one, but it's, it's a more shortcut. And the next one we are going to talk is the name constructor. So the name constructor, for example, so before because we only allow to write a, a single generative constructor. So if we write if we want pass like different parameter. When we create this object, we can use in the name constructor. For example, so I create the person on uh, this one using only name. So I only pass name and on, uh, also create a second name constructor is held out. So I only pass the age. So when I trying when I creating the object, so I can only pass the name as you can see here. So uh, let me comment out those three uh, line of code. So I create a second person and only give it its name. So when I print it out, 
so you can see the only name will be assigned okay so let me first uh, comment out those two lines of code so you can see it more clear so you see the Sarah num n n0 so because uh, the second person I using a NAND constructor so I only assign it is NAND so the gender and age will be non n0 so so for the second person I just call this is elder so what actually you will do you will assign this third person the Lucy age would be like a 20 so let me run out of this code so you can see Lucy now and and 20 okay so that's all for the generative constructor and non-constructor name constructor so the next one I'm going to talk about is the getter and setter so the getter and set actually um, you see this line of code I have an underscore before this instant variable so what undersc underscore mean the underscore just means you want to make this a uh, variable private so other class cannot access to your own property and how but you can like uh, it's called the concept of encapsulation so you can expose the getter and setter to get this value and uh, the syntax is like this so you're using the get keyword and you uh, rename this variable and return this just the return statement if it's it, because it only like a single line of return statement so you can like this one and if uh, so the orange one would be if you didn't like uh, this one you eat something like this you return uh, you return you return this one yeah this this one just a uh, uh, more sh shortcut so you can also declare using this format but personal I prefer using the first one this one and you can also declare the setter using set keyword so you can set the variable and just parsing the variable and set it is name so you make this one as uh, private so other class cannot access to this variable they must access using the method you provide the scatter and setter so let's check it out so first i make a, a person object so as you know we can like uh, explicitly declare as a person object or we can using this var keyword uh, thanks to that have a type inference so you will automatically uh, declare uh, infer this uh, person object for us so i can get this person's name by using dot so actually this will do the you will call this this method and this method will be return this this value so when i run this code i will get none because we didn't assign any value to the name but to the name attribute and so however after these lines 38 so we're using setter you see we're using setter to set this uh, value to reader so i'm using setter this this line you will execute this line line 18 you will set the underscore name to the the razor to underscore name so when i print it out the value again you will be razor right you see i we didn't using the underscore name uh this this instant variable but we still get the name because we expose the getter and setter yeah so we don't want uh, other people to ch uh, change uh, like uh, our private variable directly so they can only change it by the method we provide to the outside so we can do some logic check so suppose the the setter we can using we can write out the method properties like uh, set uh, a person's age 
so we can check we can write down some logic inside it like uh, for example and um, for example so I like us uh, I write another method like set age so I will pass the the integer value like uh, age so but I can before I set this one I can first check if the age would be greater than zero so if it is greater than zero then I will set this age uh, to the age also I need to write this keyword so this keyword just means uh, I, I assign who calls uh, the object who calling who trying to call this this set this person's age so it will be the first person in this case it will be the first person because the first person will trying to call this person set person's age so and else we'll just uh, return we'll just uh, sign this to zero maybe yeah do something else so we can check make some like a logic check using this uh, setter so make our like a uh, like program more safe right you cannot say person age to a negative value so if if we didn't have this setter method so anyone can set any value to our age to our name or to our gender so I think this is a good concept about like encapsulation and you can see this concept in different programming language okay we move to next so the next one I'm going to talk about is the inheritance so for example the inheritance so uh, inheritance is a is a relationship so for example so the car is a vehicle so we can declare a, a vehicle so and also I make it the, the variable be private so for this example I using the syntax sugar so I just assign the value to these two instant variable and simply just print out the detail and also like uh, when you write the card classes and you don't want you don't need to write the same stuff again so you're just using the eastern keyword extend the vehicle so it means you already like a this this line of code means the car class inheritance of the vehicle so you will get all the like a no private attribute and method so for example uh, you you can call it is a uh, constructor the the father class constructor this this line of code using super keyword so the super keyword are just the references of the the parents object right so this line of code will uh, call this line of code and assign the brand and capacity right. And also, uh, this one is uh, uh, is the first approach. You can create this car ob object. So, for example, you you, you create a car object, something like this. You give it a, a three parameter. First one is a uh, brand, and second one will be can and capacity, and second one will be the uh, liters, right? So, if I using the second approach, so you see, in the second approach. I didn't uh, using syntax sugar so I just uh, initial this value in the constructor so you see here so in this way when I declare a variable uh, the, the object I just need to pass those two parameters the first one would be brand and the second one would be capacity because I initiate uh, the letters in the constructor so so either uh, approach is fine but my personal is a preferred is a uh, first approach let me comment out also you see that you the vehicle class have this print the detail method and the car class also have this print detail 
like a details method but it have this override keyword so what it's override mean means you you override this method so when i trying to call this print detail it will only call the method i run here so how you going because we say if uh, we inheritance we we can get all the no private attributes and the operation method uh, of the father class so we will get this method how how we going to call it we can just using this super keyword so you see we are using super keyword i can call the father's uh, print detail method and I j using this keyword will point to myself i can just call myself this line of code will execute uh, this this method and the first uh, the 30 the 34 will also execute this 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 one so let me check so you see we print out this literal 80 right because this one is uh, uh, the cars print detail and this one would be a uh, vehicles print detail so you see the vehicle detail and this one will be this still this one so whenever you want to try to use the father's uh, father's uh, property so uh, you you can use like super keyword okay so we move to next so next i'm going to talk about is the like uh, this uh, this equality check so what's equality check so i uh, here i give you a scenario i uh, suppose you trying to implement like a to do a to do list so uh, you do you do not want to add like the to the same to do list right so if we we so first we build this to do list class and we have give it the to the to do name and the priority and we have this uh, uh, generative constructor so we declare these two variable so first we're going to compare if they are those two are same right what's the differences between those two uh, the first one will compare uh, it is hash code and the second one will be compare uh, if those two objects will be the same so so if you're trying to write this one it will be uh, return this one will be written false and this one will also be written false so let's see you see we both return false but you will say why they were written false they they have the same like uh, attribute same method same attribute so you don't want to add those like uh, the same to do into your to-do list so how you going to like differentiate based on it is like a, the name and also the priority so you want to make if uh, two to do have the same name and same priority you will make it the same right so how are we going to do this so the, the one we're going to do is we rewrite we overwrite this uh, double equals operator so we simply just compare to do's name if uh, this to do's name would be equals the object another object just like this so the t1 dot to do would be equals t2 dot to do and t1's priority would be equals to t2's priority so after we run this code we still need to rewrite our like a uh, uh, hash code right because this one will also use the hatch hatch call method so after you rewrite those two method so you see when you using this equal to equal sign you will print the true because i because i only compare it is name as the as long as it's this uh priority right because those two object has the same name and same priority 
So when I using the two equal sign, it will be print out the true. However, they are not the same object, right? You see, they are different object, but they have the same value. So you, if you're using identical, you are trying to compare two objects address. So you are not going to be a true because they are different objects. However, if you're trying to print something like t1 equals t1, you will be the true. You will be the true because they, they, they are, it's the same object, right? So hope I you you will get more understanding. So la the last one I'm going to talk is the how you're going to write the singleton in the classes in the DAR. So we've been using singleton a lot because you want you want to like maintain the the object. So you don't want to create like a multiple object and and sometimes sometimes you you have a like a situation you need to create a single object. How are you going to do this? As we uh, learned before, uh, this one will be the name constructor. Uh, also, we have uh, the underscore before it, so it will be the private constructor. So we have uh, a static final keyword before this uh, instant variable. The st static means it, it will be shared across all the instance of the classes, right? So suppose, so you create this object, so you it will call this constructor, right? The constructor will return this, the singleton instance, right? The singleton instance will uh, call this, this, this method. So it will be returned this one, and it's a static final, so you will be shared among all the like you see so it will be shared across all the instance of the class so so when I trying to run this code you will see they, they are identical they are, they are identical and the value will be also true so because they are the same object so you will be encountered some like a situation you need to create a singleton object or for example like a, the database object so when we trying to use the, like firebase uh, and you want to make it like a singleton right okay so that's all for today's lecture so if you still have any like a question so free feel to comment out in the comment below so i will try my best to help you and also thanks for watching uh, this video okay i will see you in next lesson hello everyone welcome back to my four star academic youtube channel so this series of, is all about DAR programming language for the beginners and this is our last uh, last course uh, for this series but I consider to create another series talking about the intermediate level of DAR something like non-safety and how you can write the extension on the building library and also what's the talking about the maxim also talking about the string and the multiple thread yeah so please subscribe to my channel and I will continue uploading all the content related to a full stop development without further ado let's get started so in this lesson we are going to talk about the functions in DAR. So as you can see here, I already list out all the topic we will cover in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's open the Visual Studio Code 
And as you can see here, like before, I have already written down all the content I will cover in this video. So the reason for this, I'm already talk. Uh, I already talked before, so I don't want to waste your time just watching me typing. I hope I can spend more time on like explanation, the code line by line, so you can get more understanding about what's going on and how to use it, right? So first we're going to talk about the function. Function can be divided into two parts. So first one would be building functions uh, such as print function we already used before. And another one would be user defined function. So in this lesson, I will focus more on user defined function, how you can uh, define your own function by follow the same test I'm going to share now. So back to the Visual Studio Code, you can see the comment I wrote, I wrote in here. So the syntax for your write your basic function would be uh, the return type uh, followed by the function name. Uh, remember the function name we will follow the camel case. The first letter will be small case, and also uh, we have a bracket. And inside the bracket, we can de 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 define our like data type and with a parameter and also uh, have a curly bracket. So inside this curly bracket, we will write down our function body. So remember, I, we will need have this semicomma after uh, each function body. Okay, so here is the first example. So how to write our first function. So as you can see, so we have a function, function n, so followed by the camel k, so and we have a return type. So what's the void? So the void, uh, there are two types. So first one would be a void, which means you didn't want to return anything. So another would be the function, uh, another would be the object. So either by like an integer, a double, a list, and also uh, if you didn't write the return type the by default, the dar will return dynamic for you. So the dynamic type we already talk, talking about before. So it just simply allow any type in dar, even the noun is allowed. So here we write our function body. So it's a, a simply a print out function. So you can see uh, we can uh, call function uh, without another functions. Yeah, this is allowed. So this, uh, this is our first function. So let's go to uh, run this code to see what happens. Yeah, you see, we call our first function. So how to call your first function? So you, uh, the function just invoked by using the function name, as you see here. So we, we write this function name, the same function name, and followed by this uh, bracket, a pair of bracket, and also the semicolon. So semicolon, so we can call our first function. And also, uh, if you didn't write, uh, so here is an example about our uh, second function. So if you didn't specify the return type, it will automatic the dar will automatically return the dynamic type. So when I move my mouse to the second function, so as you can see, that already returned this dynamic type. So in my case, this would be the string, but it just start just give it our like a dynamic type because string is a subtype of this dynamic. So how to run this second function? So just like this first one and we Call it his name. So you can see the second function is because uh, we didn't print anything, so you won't be allowed, uh, you won't uh, able to see any like a. So, but we can using pre statement and put our function inside it. As you can see, like this. So, and we're going to print the statement inside our second function. You see? Yeah. Okay, we move to the next one. So next one, I'm going to talk uh, the parameter in the function. So as you can see here, the function, 
uh, by default, you can uh, you don't need to pass anything, but you can also uh, pass the, any parameter uh, as you want. So, for example, in this one, this example app two functions. So, what it do? Uh, what does it do? It just add two in. Uh, just add two to whatever you passed in. For example, this function. So for example, I call this function just uh, like this. I give it like a number one. So the result will be three. So the three will be print out in the console. So let me comment out the code. So as you see here, the three will be print out, will be print out because I add two. I call this function and I, so and um, I pass the one and I print out your B3, right? And because, so in this one, you see the parameter, you can specify, so which type, so it allows. So for example, so in this case, we just allow the int. So for example, uh, if are we are trying to pass like a double, so the compiler will, will produce error, set the line. See, the compiler wouldn't, uh, wouldn't allow me to do this because the argument type is a double, cannot be assigned to the parameter type in. So what's the argument and what's the parameter? So the argument would be the actual, like a literal or any reference you passed into this function. And the parameter, however, just the data type along with it is, it is the variable name, this one. It's a parameter, and what you pass inside would be the argument, right? So you won't allow since we have, we, we explicitly told the function we have uh, int type. Okay, so and we can also write this. Uh, uh, but if you want to pass double, how can you do this? So you just write a number because num is the a super type of the int as well as the double. So if you write function like this, you could either pass the integer or double into this function. So for example, I call this function here, as you can see here. So I can I could either pass two integer and I can also pass a one double and one in one integer. And I can also pass like a two double you know, like a point two. However, so if you write down something like this, so the return type would be double, right? If you passing two integer to this function, so you will return the result will be in. And if you pass the double along with integer, so the result will be double. This one is the same, the result will be double. So let's run out this code. You see, the first one is three, this one is three, and this one is 3.2, and this one is 2.2, uh, 3.4. So if uh, another uh, stuff I want to mention if is if you only have uh, one line of statement, so if you have a single line of function body, you can uh, use use uh, syntax sugar provide by dar. So just use this arrow, and you write the same the same stuff. But you can ignore this curly bracket and the return statement. Just put this this arrow. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. So. It's the same, so we can call this function. So, uh, for example, I just call this function like uh, I go give two and sub to one, and I print it out. So I think result will be one, right? As you see here, and also because the, it allow the number type, so I can either pass integer and also as well as the double. 
Okay, the next one we're going to talk is the name parameter. So the name parameter would be uh, something you write uh, inside this uh, curly bracket. As we know, if we, if we write function uh, like these, so those parameter is required. So if you just write like uh, you want to call a function and you just something like this, you didn't pass anything, so the compiler will produce error. So it says there are two position arguments expect but zero found. So you need to uh, pass two arguments, right? This is required. However, if you want pass, like uh, if you want make this parameter as a uh, optional, so you have a uh, uh, two choice. The first one would be this name parameter. And the second one would be this positional uh, parameter. So let's first first talk about this uh, named parameter. So you see here. So uh, after uh, dar version two point uh, twelve, by default it is non safety. So it cannot allow you to define like a variable as a noun. So if you want to clear your variable as a noun, so you just I'll put this quotation mark after it is data type. So if uh, if I didn't give it its value, so it will produce error. So the compiler will be not allowed. So the either way is you can make something like this, or you just give it is the default value, right? So you can also use like uh, this simple, but I highly recommend you use like this one. So you can do whatever you want. And so let's try to call this function. So the printer function. So let's call this printer function. As you can see here, the first one, I just print uh, 35 uh, because those, those two is uh, optional. So you see, those two is optional. So, so for, let me run out this code. As you can see here, so I will print out uh, the 35, 35 over here. Uh, sorry, let me comment sorry, out. Sorry, I missed that. Comment out this one and run it again. Okay, 35, no, and 1. So it will be print 35. By this, the first one will be 35, I passed in, and the S1 will be now because I make a this string default now and also this one and this one would be would be one right because I didn't give any value so by default it will be one but it's a string type okay and also we can pass something like uh, this and we can just pass the 35 and uh, the name parameter for the S1. So let's run this code again. So we can see we print out 35, hello and one. So which is this one, this line of code. S1, we were passing the hello, right? And the S2 would be still the default value would be one. So also I can just simply pass the S2 argument. So I think result uh, result would be like this. This result would be thirty five as we and hello and one right the string one and this one would be thirty five and num and word right. Let's see. So yeah, it's the same as where we expect would be like this right because the S1 you didn't uh, because in this line of code you didn't pass anything to this S1 so the S1 would be none right by default so and also you pass the word into the S2 S2 so the, the default value for S2 would be override by what you passed in so let me come out this for first okay so so next one we are going to talk about is the 
like a position a parameter. So uh, unlike the name parameter, uh, you can write this uh, square bracket. And so what you write is those uh, param those parameter is like a optional, right? But you need to follow, but they follow the the position. And so let me come out those code and we can see so why we're we talking. So if you only pass 35, so it will allow. So the first one will be print 35 and those two is now. So the result would be uh, 35 and now and now, right? So as we can see here, uh, 35 now and now, yes. Okay, so there's this one, come out this one and we, so I think we expect like a 35 and hello, string hello, and also now for the, the third argument, right? So let's run again, you can see here, uh, 35, hello, and now, right? The same. We are expect. So if we're trying to write this one, so I think the result would be 35 and hello, string hello, and wall. Yeah, so let's run out the code again. You see here the 35 and hello world, right? So this one, uh, the hello would be uh, assigned to the S1 and the word will be assigned to this S2. So you can see uh, what we ex expect. Okay, so we are going to talk about is the recursion. So as you can see here, so we are trying to calculate uh, three vectorials. So which is one times two times three would be equal to six. So how are we going to write the function? So here I just give you a quick example. So first, I will be check if uh, the path, the, the value would be equal to one. So if it is not equal to one, so we will return itself uh, times the factorial. Uh, we are passing x minus one. So as you can see here, if we are trying to calculate factorial three, so we will first, we will call uh, three times a factorial two, right? Three times factorial two. So the three times factorial two will call two times factorial one. And factorial one, by default, will return one, right? So it return one. So one times two will return two. And two times three will return six. So the six will be written. So, uh, always remember to write this base case so you will not run out like a stack overflow. So if you forgot write run write down this line of code, so your program will probably like a run out like stack overflow. Let's run the code to see if we implement is successful. Yes, you see the sex is printed out to the console. Okay, the next one we are going to talk about is the high order function. So what do we mean high order of the function? So the high order function means you can make uh, the function as your parameter and you can pass the function into it. So for example, so we have uh, the first function would be add number and we have second function would be add two. So what add two does is you take a number and simply add two into the number we passing in. So uh, for example, if you're passing one, so you will return three, right? So if you didn't write uh, the return type, the dar will automatically return the dynamic type. So, but we know we want the integer type, right? So we can explicitly write down the type we want to return. So you run out this function. So the function will take out every element in this list and add two into it, right? because you see, so you call this function, function as a parameter, and you took this function, and you just call this function 
by using the element inside this list, right? So for example, so if you I give the array like one, two, three, so I think the result would be uh, three, four, and five because we add two. Yeah, let's see. Let's run the code and see what's the result. Yeah, you see, the result would be 3, 4, and 5. Another example would be you can pass your function into this for each method. So, for example, we want to print out this uh, each element inside this array. So we uh, call the for each method inside this uh, list and we pass print function, you see. Here we print out the element inside this array. Uh, don't worry, we'll uh, get more practice in this for each method. So the next one we're going to talk is, is the nested function. So the nested function so you, means you can call function inside, you can write the function inside another function and just simply call, uh, invoke it uh, invoked by its name. So as you can see in this example, we write our outer functions. So outer function would be just simply print out this outer function statement. Uh, so in we also have the we also declare our nested function inside this outer function. So and after we declare and we just call it immediately, right? So as you can see here, and when I trying to run run this line of code, you will. So you will see the outer function print out first and the next function. So let me first comment out the this one, this part, and let's see. Yeah, outer function print out first and the next function, right? As you can see here. And also you can use like a, a function. The next one I'm going to talk about is the function closure. Right, the function closure by definition is you can return another function. You can inside the function, for example, inside is a calculate function, and you can return another function, and you can uh, make you can store this variable. But don't worry, we'll come back later. So first, talk about uh, the the function scope. Yeah, after we talking, uh, don't worry. After we talking about the function scope. So we will talk, we will come back to this example. What is function scope? So like the example I wrote here, and we have the variable outside this result function, and we also declare the same variable with the same variable name. And you can now declare two, uh, two names in the same scope, right? For example, this one will be not allowed because they inside the same like a code code block, right? But here, those are in different code block, right? This the, the, the first one, first variable will be in this outside code block, and this one will be in the the inner code block. So you call this square two. So we simply the function will be simply return. Uh, Four, right? As you can see, the definition of this square function. So if you passing two, you will return false. So after run this function, so the variable will be four, right? So what kind? So I have a question to ask you. What do you think when you're trying to print out this variable? What kind of the value you will have? So let's run out. So in my opinion, I think this one would be. Uh, 4 and the outside would be still 0. So let's check out. Yeah So what's why, why you are still the 4 because you are trying to find uh, the closed one, right? Because this one is most close to so you will print out the 4 and also because uh, This one inside this code base uh, code block and also inside this code block so you are trying to find the closed one. So for this one, for this statement, he only inside this out out this code block, the yellow one, code block. 
so you could only access to this variable so the value will be zero all the time right so after you know the function uh, function closure so let's go back to what we have the which one the function closure yeah in this one the function closure so you write uh, you you declare a calculate function and you declare a variable inside this calculate function and you return another function which uh, reference to this counter value so let's trying to see what is the result for this one so you pass the 2 as this base right so the value is 2 plus the 1 you see in this case would be a 2 plus 1 would be 3 and next time you this one would be 3 so how about this one so some people might say oh you will still be 3 because you call it again so you pass 2 right so no so in this case the result would be 4 so let's run the code to see you see the value is 4 3 and 4 how right because you have a reference to this counter right the inner function you return will have a reference to this counter so the last time you call this uh, this function so this counter would be 1 and you increase uh, you call it once so you will be increased to 2 so next time you call it will be 2 plus 2 would be the 4 right however so if we declare we again right we 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 call this outer function again right we clear uh, we, we call it outer function means we create another copy of this counter so it will start from one again so in this case it will be one plus one will be two and this one will be three right so let's run the code you see it's the same way i'm expect will be three and two and three right okay so the last one I'm going to talk about is the anonymous function. So as you can see from the code I wrote, uh, we have a list and contain three integer one, two, three, and we're trying to multiply it is value by two. So we write function in this way. So in here, we didn't specify it is function name. So you see, it, this one is actually the anonymous function so it only uh, in the syntax for anonymous function is you have a parameter and you have function body that's enough right so if you only have one line of statement so here is the uh, the syntax more easy right in this way so let's print out and see what's the value so after you run this line of code you will get 246 right 246 but this one 246 and but you print it again it will still 123 so why so because and it didn't change the element uh, inside it. Uh, by default, it just create another array and trying to manu manipulate in the new array. So you, you print out again, the value will be still one, two, three, right? And th this one will be syntax sugar for this anonymous function. As long as you only have one line of function body, you can write this, you can uh, ignore the curly bracket and return statement and just put in this arrow mark right okay that's all for today's lesson so thank you for watching and uh, feel free to thumbs up my video and i will really appreciate your time and your support so also i will continue uploading uh, the video about uh, the four star development and next series i'm going to talk about is the flutter and that's all thanks for watching